Good morning, <clears throat> friends and loved ones. The, and other, you know. <laughs> I don't have to know yet, I guess. Anyway, I'm standing here uh, on the steps of some monument. I don't quite know what it is. It's, uh, it looked interesting to me, the steps. Uh, I just thought it was a great background, so I'm here. I'm in Rome. Uh, attempted to do as the Romans do, but you know, here's the question, and no one ever asks this, how does one identify the Romans? Just everyone here? Because if that's true, then I should just be able to do as I do all the time, because I'm here. So does that mean I'm a Roman? It's a complicated question that I think uh, has been unaddressed so far. At any rate, I'm here in Rome. <laughs> I, uh, I got here yesterday uh, with my URL pass, which I love. It's incredibly convenient. Uh, it's, it's a really nice thing. It was expensive, but it's, it's very nice. Uh, and so I, I took like a five hour train ride and then a two hour train ride and I'm here. So it's seven hours from Innsbruck. I arrived at, oh, I think it was maybe seven o'clock at night. Uh, I attempted to stand in the train station and get, you know, directions on my phone to my hostel because I knew it was only seven blocks, but I didn't know what direction. And uh, a guy walked up to me, one of the hotel guys, and he uh, he asked me where I was going and pointed, and uh, so I uh, went that direction. And I found the hostel eventually, not terribly well marked. But I had read a few things online on the hostel guide uh, that, you know, helped me figure out which one it was. I got there, I got the top bunk. Now, a few words about booking your hostel. Don't do it late. Just don't do it late. What? What is my fascination <laughs> for waiting until the last minute? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm still fascinated with that process. So, uh, so I booked a little late. Uh, day before is late, and I got the top bunk. Eek! Uh, and there's there was no ladders. So there was a lot of chair using, and uh, I hope I don't have the top bunk tonight. So, uh, but they're very nice at that place, uh, the Hotel Sandy is where I'm at. Very nice people, and really kind of a cheap rate for Rome. Uh, last night was like 20 euro, you know. So, and it's it's hitting traveling season, so. You know, good rate, nice people, fabulous. So, <clears throat> woke up this morning. Last night I went exploring online what, you know, how to best use my time here in Rome. I've got two days. I want to see everything I can in two days. A lot of picture taking, a lot of running around, little Michelangelo. Yeah. And I'm very excited about this. So uh, I went online, I got a bus. Uh, there are no new Europe tours in this town. Sad face. Uh, but I got uh, a hop on, hop off bus tour for 48 hours. It starts this morning. It'll show you all the major sites in Rome and you can, uh, you know, hop on and hop off the bus and uh, whenever you want. And then I also got a Vatican, skip the line Vatican tour because I have to see, I have to see the work, to see the Sistine. So uh, that's what I'm off to do today. You know, I'm gonna go find the Vatican right now. My tour's at one, but I just wanna go find it and wander around in it and then do the tour thing. So that's my mission. Wish me luck. You'll receive updates on the way. Hello everyone. We have, uh, we are right now in the world's smallest country, also Vatican City. Uh, they have not found evidence of me here yet, obviously, or else they probably would have kicked me out, but I'm just gonna sneak some footage. So uh, this is it, baby. What you're looking at right now is the line to get into the Vatican Museums. It's probably a two hour line. Uh, I will be skipping the line. Uh, I did the tour tourist thing and I uh, just uh, bought a ticket to skip the line and get a tour in there. Because you know I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, so, you know, uh, it'll just be better for everyone. Um, so, 
coming up on this uh, that building right there, boop, dead center. That is the uh, the Vatican Museums itself. I think so. Anyway, I mean that's what uh, that's what I'm guessing. Uh, I I really need to look some of this stuff up, but didn't do that last night. Um, <laughs> just hired a tour. <laughs> um, at any rate, keep spinning, keep spinning. This is uh, the uh, Vatican uh, obelisk. It's very popey. Uh, little phallic. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there you go. Uh, it's an obelisk. What do you expect? Then, of course, a uh, picture of a large picture of a pope over there. wonder how he feels about that. It's just huge, you know. I mean, it would it would make me scared to have my face that big on anything. At any rate, more columns. Looks like some gardens up there, uh, past that white building there. Looks like some some trees and stuff. Don't know what's there. Could find out today. Don't know. And then I don't know. Kind of a yellow building. So anyway, that's the panorama uh, inside the Vatican City today. I'll be taking some photos before my tour. I'll be wandering around, uh, hopefully not being conspicuous, again, trying not to be discovered. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that seems Everyone, to be... This is... I'm, I'm in the, the Vatican Museum, which is where the Sistine Chapel is located. And I just wanted to show you something. This was... Uh, this room was painted by Raphael. Whoops, a little glare there. Sorry about that. It was painted at about the same time Michelangelo was painting the Sistine Chapel. Anyway, Raphael was, uh, I mean, he was a great artist as well. Michelangelo, though, pretty much hated him, felt he was the devil. Um, it was a big jealousy thing because they were, they were both great painters, but everyone liked Raphael. Like, Raphael smiled and talked to people and got along with the other humans and uh, Michelangelo didn't uh, so there was this kind of great rivalry <clears throat> anyway just want to show you the ceiling here as well some pretty crazy stuff I'm now shooting over my head ain't that wild that's a that's a command of perspective right there Hello. <clears throat> well a life, uh, well, I would say a lifelong dream. It's only really been about a 10-year long dream, but uh, but a long dream uh, has been accomplished. I saw the chapel, Brother Mike's paintings, and, uh, well, this fabulous. Um, it's been quite an afternoon. I signed up for a tour, which I was never able to find the meeting point. The meeting point said one thing on the website and then the confirmation email they sent said another. So, woo! Um, get a thumbs down it uh, for those folks. Uh, not not a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun. Theater. Not, not great. Because uh, it's hot out here. Uh, I was sweating and running around and asking directions in a language that I'm not familiar with and so of course the answers I got back were interesting. But uh, what I finally came up with was uh, I went back to the place that I was before, that huge rotunda of Vatican city-ness, and uh, I uh, went up to one of the tourist booths and I said, hey, I just want to see the Sistine Chapel, what do I do? And he said, go back, go back to this point where I was supposed to meet the other tour and go to this place. It's the Musei Vaticani, and uh, at first I kind of thought that was, I, you know, I didn't really even know what it was to tell you the truth. Uh, I figured it was a museum of religious art of something, but actually it's really interesting. They've got a lot of stuff in there, um, and it's it's all, you know, of course, art that was made for the Vatican itself. So you. You're walking through, and you walk through uh, certain apartments of some important guy, and then you walk through some apartments that uh, Raphael did, you know, his painting and all that kind of stuff. And then you you know, walk through, and you've got some artifacts there. 
it's all really interesting, even if you're very non-religious, which, you know, I am. So, uh, it takes a couple hours. It's, uh, it was 15 euro today, uh, to do that. Not bad, not bad at all, for what I got to see. And, uh, and yeah, it took a couple hours to walk through the whole place. Uh, I took many, many photographs, as you can imagine. And we'll see, eventually, I'm sure. And then I got to go stand in the masterpiece, dude. It was awesome. Uh, I loved Michelangelo. Ugh. Tortured. Angry. Arr. Thought his painting was crap. Really hated his painting. Really felt he was a better sculptor, and uh, he really wanted to sculpt the Pope's tomb. Is what he wanted to do. Uh, and uh, the Pope said, no, I disagree, I think you should come paint my chapel. But of course, in those days, if you said no to the Pope, he could legally murder you. So, Michelangelo was forced to come and do this thing, and it took him about four and a half years from start to finish. There were a lot of problems with the ceiling. Uh, there was a lot of cracking, a lot of crap, I mean, a lot of stuff like they'd paint it, and then the next day they'd come and they'd find, like, a fragment of what was there, and so they'd have to redo it all again, and... And Michelangelo, most painters used assistants and things like that, you know, and Michelangelo, he would just periodically fire all of them and do the work himself, lying on his back on a scaffold, paint dripping in his face. Angry, angry, angry guy. Love him. He finally did get to do the Pope's tomb, by the way. He finally did get to sculpt what he wanted to sculpt, but not after he threw a four and a half year old long fit. Uh, he just, <laughs> he was so angry, so moody, so brooding. Love Michelangelo. Uh, he, uh, and it, you know, one of the things he did, of course, was, uh, trompe l'oeil, which is to fool the eye, which is one of the things that's, that's amazing about the ceiling, because you could swear that there's a lot more architectural elements in there that are actually in there, because he makes things look very real to the eye, which aren't real at all. Um, so that was great, and of course his painting of the physique. I can't remember how many figures there are um, on the ceiling, but it's I think it's over a hundred. There's a lot anyway. And they're all very, very well done. It's hard to do one well. It's hard to do one realistically. And this guy just uh, turned them out like bubbles and soda pop. It was ridiculous. Anyway. Uh, so, if you find yourself here, next to a building that looks like this, like a huge tomb, basically, you're in the right place. Just go in that door. Uh, it's closed right now, but it's that one, the green one. Go in that door. Give them 15. They're going to make you put your backpack up. They're going to request that you not take photos at all in the Sistine Chapel, which I didn't. Most uh, there, most people did, though. Most people were shooting a shot here and there and everywhere. And there were just really big guys hanging out in there that had badges and uh, some authority to scream, no photo at you. And they looked serious to me. And, you know, they, they made a request, so I complied. I really didn't want to take a picture, but I knew that it was going to end up being one of those really crappy shots, so I just didn't bother. So, uh, so yeah. It was interestingly enough, though, they don't want you to talk in there. They don't want you to talk in there because when you talk, you expel, like, twice as much carbon dioxide as when you just are breathing. And the carbon dioxide has an effect, of course, on the painting, and that's, you know, uh, they want to they wanna keep that as long as they can. They've already restored it once, and, you know, the things are awfully hard to restore, and I can see their point. But, so they want you to remain silent in the chapel, and yet, you got guys screaming no photo, and you've also got one going, wait till that motorcycle passes, you've also got one going, every two minutes. It is really insanely annoying. So I'm not sure what their point is there. I'm not, I'm just, you know, they need to come up with a system of maybe telling people that's why they don't want them to talk or something rather than screaming and shushing. And there's a lot of pushing and shoving in there too and a lot of people not looking where they were going. So that's always fun for me. Always fun for me. Anyway, now it's time. It's time to go back across the river. It's time to go investigate more of Rome. 